When I think of 90s TV for kids, the first channel that pops into my head is Nickelodeon, which I feel like it's probably the same for most of you. 90s Nick was just so iconic, from his live action shows to the amazing game shows and especially the cartoons. Nick's lineup of shows during the 90s made the channel a serious powerhouse for kids TV. When trying to come up with a list of the top 5 best Nickelodeon shows of the 90s, I realized just how hard it really was. After doing some thinking, I figured since I already did the 5 best Nick Jr. shows of all time, why not just keep separating them? So this list is going to be the top 5 best 90s Nicktoons of all time. Just like all my other lists, this is just my personal opinion, and if you don't like my choices, that's totally fine. Just let me know in the comments down below what are your top 5 favorite 90s Nicktoons of all time are. Also, the show must either air in the 90s or have its runtime in the 90s. If the show debuted December 31st of 1999 or started in 1988 and ran until 1998, it could be considered for this list. So without further ado, let's get started. Starting at number 5, we have Rocket Power. Yeah, before you click off, yeah, I'm putting Rocket Power in my top 5, and here's why. When I was growing up, I was all about skateboarding, rollerblading, BMX, and other action sports like that. And this cartoon was all about that. Is it perfect? No. But it had everything that I loved. The theme song and intro got you pumped up for the show, and the animation, in my opinion, is pretty damn good. And also, the humor is right up my alley. It takes place in Ocean Shores, California, which is basically a combo of all the popular ocean cities in California, like Venice Beach and Santa Monica, and I feel like they really captured the essence of these cities in Ocean Shores. The characters all have unique personalities. We have Otto, who has to be the best at everything, and if he's not, he's kind of a sourpuss. Uh, we have Reggie, who is Otto's sister, uh, who tries to be the reasonable one of the group, we have Sam, aka Squid, who's the nerd. Then we have Twister, who's not the brightest of the bunch, but is a really good, loyal friend. We also have Otto Reggie's dad, Raymundo, who has amazing stories, and one of my favorite characters of all time, Tita. The show is basically just about their day to day adventures and doing these extreme sports. Uh, one episode that really stands out to me is where they try to track down Tony Hawk and they go to his warehouse, which is full of these insane obstacles that they have to skate, bike, and snowboard in just to try to find him. Overall, this show is just super fun and it really got me pumped up to go skate. At number 4, we have Doug. I absolutely love this show. It takes a typical trope of being the new kid in town and their adventures, but it just makes it feel special. The animation is great and it has a unique cast of characters in both personality and looks from Quailman down to Roger. For this being Nickelodeon's first Nicktoon, it's fantastic and a home run. Like I said, the characters are great and the stories always start with Doug writing in his journal. This show actually inspired me to have a journal as well, but I never had unique and quirky stories to tell like Doug did, which shouldn't be surprising. And who could also forget about Doug's crush Patty Manny's and his best friend Skeeter? Now let's talk about that theme song. The theme song for Doug is easily in my top 10 cartoon theme songs of all time. It's actually number 6 to be exact, so if you want to check out that video, it's kind of old, but I'll have it linked down below for you. It's probably one of the more iconic Nicktoon theme songs, from the beat down to the acapella vocals and the guitar riff in the middle, it's just great. Doug was eventually bought out by Disney and ended up making a feature length movie and continuing the cartoon on the Disney Channel, however they changed the style of the characters a little and it just wasn't as good in my opinion as the Nickelodeon version. At number 3 we had the Angry Beavers. What's the best way to describe the Angry Beavers? Well, it's wacky and zany with some episodes that don't have a super ground storyline, which you might think is a negative, but I personally love it. It's almost like a cross between Red and Stimpy and Rocco's Modern Life. Not an exact mix, but it has elements of both. You have two beaver brothers, try saying that 
five times fast, Norbert and Daggett, who are off living on their own for the very first time. You have Norbert, who is super chill and gives off total stoner vibes and always seems to get his way, like things always seems to work out for him. Then you have Daggett, who is kind of childish and nothing ever seems to go right for him, even when he tries his hardest. I always kind of felt bad that nothing good ever really happened to him, even if he tries to do the same thing as Norbert. However, the intro for the show really sets up this dynamic very well and prepares you for this even before getting into the show. The best comparison I can make is like Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. Norbert is like Bugs and Daggett is like Daffy. Speaking of the intro, we have to talk about, you guessed it, the theme song. It is so catchy and so good, from the horns down to the soft vocals saying Angry Beavers. I love it. I love it. I don't think it's as good as Doug's, but it's very close. One standout episode to me is the episode called Long in the Teeth. It's about Norm growing out his teeth and Dag is advising against it. But since Norm is the cool guy, all the friends and everybody in the woods start doing it. Dag finally decides to grow out his teeth too and when looking in the mirror, his teeth start wrapping around him. The same thing happens to Norm as well when we see this. Uh, he's in the ball of his own teeth rolling towards Dag. Eventually they both get stuck in a tree and can't come down. I remember watching that and just imagining how bad that would hurt in real life. Anyways, the show is hilarious. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Coming in at number 2, we have Rocco's Modern Life. Besides Ren and Stimpy, I think Rocco's Modern Life has the most adult humor in a Nick 2. From Rocco working as a sex phone operator down to the popular fast food restaurant called Chokey Chicken. This cartoon was definitely made for a mature audience, however, I loved it when I was a kid. It has a little bit of a gross out style like Ren and Stimpy, but I think Rocco's Modern Life does it a little more classy. This show is seriously hilarious and full of innuendos that I never got as a kid, and rewatching it now just makes it even more great. Rocco is just a lovable wallaby trying to make it on his own, and he has the help of his friend Heifer, who is just a slob and eats everything, but is a devoted friend who loves life. And then you have Filbert, who is kind of nervy and has a lot of phobias. The dynamic between all of them is very enjoyable to watch and it's just super funny. The show has a bunch of memorable characters like Rocco's dog Spunky, Mr. and Mrs. Big Head, and Rocco's boss Mr. Dupe. Of course, I have to talk about the theme song. It's just so good and so catchy. Uh, there is actually two different versions of it as well. This show is just something you need to watch. I would say kids can watch it, but it's even better as an adult. Oh, also, don't forget, there's an episode where Heifer goes to hell, which is pretty funny because they also make fun of the censors for that as well. I believe it's because in one of the very first episodes, there's a carnival ride that's an elevator that goes down to hell, and the sign says hell. So I'm pretty sure that's what they're making fun of. Now for some honorable mentions. Nope, not Spongebob. Although it's great, it's not my personal favorite. Mine would have to go to... This cartoon is nothing short of a masterpiece. From the animation to the characters down to the stories each episode tells. It will make you laugh creep you out, and even make you cry. If you saw the Christmas episode with Mr. Wynn and his daughter, it probably brought a tear to your eye. Hey Arnold has so much heart and soul to it, even when there's no serious moments happening. It makes you feel like these cartoon characters are actually real and that these could be legit kids living in the city. I mean, minus the oddly shaped heads, but these characters have so much sense of realism, it just feels refreshing. As somebody that grew up in a small town in Florida and would spend almost every summer in New York City and New Jersey, I do feel like I captured what it was like growing up in the city. What's great about this show is that you get to see everybody grow. 
Even the most unlikable, bad characters do have their moments of redemption and growth. I don't think cartoons had to teach anything, but this show really shows the importance of being kind to of people because you don't know what their backstories are. The animation and voice acting are great, and the theme song is super jazzy and catchy. Also, Arnold's room is so badass. Even as an adult, I would kill to have a room like that. If you have not seen Hey Arnold, I can't recommend it enough. Do yourself a favor and watch it. Well, that's my top 5 favorite 90s Nicktoons of all time. I know I'm missing some big hitters on here, but again, this is my personal top 5, and I chose 5 that really meant something to me. If you have different choices, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching, stay rad, and I'll see you guys next time.